Figure drawing for me has been an ongoing process for uh, well over 50 years. And um, I see it as a way of learning to see accurately. And it informs the rest of my artwork. Uh, my painting, for the most part, has been very abstract. But just learning to see accurately is so key to everything else I do as an artist. It's been very important as a discipline. Um, at this point, depending on the time of year, I draw two or three times a week. And since um, I left staff at Unison and have been full-time in my studio, it's been my goal to really nail my drawing. As I say, it's a, it's a process of seeing accurately. Not only seeing accurately, but I'm also trying to uh, see accurately and then on occasion abstract from that. But every time I try to, I leave uh, the literal image, I'm wanting to do, do it based on my seeing process in, in Drawing, it's more the line, and and kind of, and also, you know, when I say seeing accurately, it's it's seeing the nuance of shadow as it falls on the figure, and uh, depending on whether it's a short pose or or in a nine-hour drawing, I'm wanting to capture whatever I'm doing as accurately as I can, or base whatever I'm doing on something that I'm actually seeing. When, when I see a new artist, uh, it's always important uh, to me to also see their drawing. I, I think it's for, for any artist, the ability to see accurately is uh, probably the key piece to uh, doing work that is substantially strong. I think a person's drawing skill uh, is directly relates to their ability to do anything else in their art. And at least I find that true of myself. And when I, especially when I see someone who's doing abstract work, who's drawing is weak, I question their, their work because in an abstract painting, you can get lucky. You, know, you can do a painting that looks very nice, or you can learn a couple tricks that will lead you to uh, doing things that are pleasing to look at. But to really get the depth in one's work, it's important to see accurately. And, and you know, whether it's seeing the nuance in color or the nuance in light and dark, light and shade. It, it's, it's just crucial to seeing that. And in drawing, learning the nu the nuances are, are similar. It's, it's, in, well, in black and white, it's going to be light and shade. But it's being able to see how the shade falls on the figure, how the drapery how light lands on the drapery, and then being able to translate that three-dimensional experience into a two-dimensional, you know, hopefully reality. But again, which isn't to say that doing realistic drawing is the be-all and end-all. I mean, you can go anywhere with it, and, and you know, so many artists have you look at Picasso's drawings, and, and the, the guy didn't know how to draw, draw a bad line. I mean, it just is, or at least the ones we see, I imagine he probably did some bad lines, but you don't get to see those. But in, when you start abstracting, you're drawing exactly what you mean to be drawing. That's the important piece. When you're laying down the color just the way you mean to be doing it. Which doesn't mean you can't surprise yourself, because I do that all the time. But it means that in the process, you can see the image as it's transforming and recognize where something is 
in in the image you know whether it's in the foreground or as it comes into the background and when you're dealing with abstraction my foreground and background can can be anything you want it to be but it has to make sense and in a way that relates to the world that we're all all living and sitting and, and breathing in so unless it's doing that it doesn't have a reality the work the work itself by itself might appear really quite strong and it could be just a sense of being real lucky or a sense of learning a trick I mean it could be very much like like a magician who you know and, and this is really a key thing in all artwork is that the process of, of evolving a piece of artwork needs to be one that's feeding the artist and you know when if I'm doing a painting Say that, that I'm not solving a problem that is taking me to another step, then, you know, why do it? And, and you know, I, the analogy of the magician comes in here where, you know, like a magician can learn a trick and show it to one person and they'll say, wow, and then show it to another person and they'll say, wow, and do that for for days and weeks and years, but eventually I think the magician is going to get tired of showing the same damn trick to the next person who hasn't seen it. I think that if art is not feeding the learning process of the artist at some point is, uh, is going to become boring to the artist. And when you... Uh, and, and I think that's part of the problem with the whole, the whole gallery scene for so many years. I mean, I've seen this so many times when a young artist will put together a body of work that's evolved naturally and come, come up with, with kind of a statement of their own that's very interesting. And they'll take it to a gallery and a gallery will say, wow, and put it up and they'll have a one-person show and they'll sell a lot of it or all of it or whatever. And then the artist goes back to the studio, and in the process, his work starts evolving, changing. Some ways, you know, maybe getting more interesting, maybe not, because it's a process. You're, you're, sometimes it's some acts are hard to follow. You know, you have to go back to square one and start again sometimes, what, whatever. But what will happen is the artist will come back to the gallery, and often the gallery owner will say, "Hey." This isn't the work that I just sold a whole show of yours. I, I want I want ten more of those things that you that you showed me that you showed here last year. And meanwhile, the artist has gone has moved away from that, well, moved beyond that in some ways. You know, I mean, and often an artist is pressured to regurgitate something that worked last year or the year before or the year before and because of that they, they they're not they get caught in the situation of having to choose between being represented by a, a strong gallery that's selling their work and working on their own work and evolving it in its own natural progression I think that's one of the reasons that that I think it can be in some ways dangerous for young artists to to really hit it early, because they, they can be caught in that temptation of you know before they've really nailed their process down, and by the process I don't mean just doing a few paintings that really work, but a process of years of evolving your work and and taking it wherever it, you th think it needs to go. And then, and, and if it doesn't go, you know, it's only paint on canvas, you know. Go someplace else, you know. Don't, not have to worry about going back to the, your magic trick, going back to this magic trick that you've learned, learned how to do so well, but is no longer feeding you. And, you know, that, that it's, a, it's a tough situation. It's very hard for an artist to remain true to their process and also, you know, true to the market. And 
in some ways, I, I guess I, I, I was sort of lucky because I was able to make enough of a living to, to support my family through uh, arts administration, through, through running Unison Art Center. And meanwhile, I could be in my studio painting and not worry about it for my, my livelihood, so to speak, from putting food on the table. I, I think on some levels, I, I wasn't able to put out as much work in those years as, as I might have otherwise, you know, if I, if I had just been in my studio otherwise. But the work I did was always part of a process that evolved naturally. And I, th I think that's, on some level, served me. Sure, I'd like to sell them, and actually, I mean, it's beginning to happen. I'm so involved in a process that I've developed over many, many years that, that it, it's almost impossible for me to go back to something I did 40 years ago and think that I can try to regurgitate that because, it, you know, it's, it's just not who I am anymore. You know, art, art's a very tricky process to, uh, to choose. Okay, I'll take a break.